Oh, we got a new book. Great. Well, we have one for him down there if he shows up. We have two extra down there. I know that would be Mr. French and uh, Mr. Oh, Gomez isn't going to be here, so. Mr. Flores, Flores Alvarez is on. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. That's the old one. You know if Mr. French is there? Lynn, yes. I'm working for Dollars for Scholars at the same time, so if I get up and just take a box of Steve, don't be put off. I'll be okay. 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 We're trying to get our okay. mailing drive done before we have to do it on Friday. Okay. So. Chris, you have me. So, okay, folks, I'm calling the meeting to order, and I want to thank everybody who's here and people who are watching this. Um, I particularly want to recognize that we have two Board of Finance members here with us today, which is great. Thank you, Tyler and Josh, for being here. And um, uh, we're going to be hearing from the superintendent. She's going to walk us through uh, the proposed operating budget for 2018-2019. Um, for members of the public who are watching, I want to um, uh, emphasize that this has been a work in progress for the past month or so. Um, we have thoroughly reviewed, I think, eight different scenarios for, for the budget at and least. at least eight different scenarios for the budget. And what we're going to hear about tonight is, is the um, sort of where we landed after our, our um, multiple discussions and questions. Um, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Patricia Garcia to walk us through. Thank you. I'm going to stay over here since we have members of the community. And this is going to be very hard because I've been dealing with this for a couple, couple days. Blame the kindergarten students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you, you need to hold a microphone you while you do it? Walker. Is that a portable mic? Where's the... Mm. Uh. Is the handheld one over there? Would that be easier than the corded one? Okay. And then everybody watch it off, wipe it off with alcohol wipes after? Yeah. Are you really available for SPM anymore? Outstanding. Um, Members of the Board of Education, thank you for the opportunity to share with you the superintendent proposed budget. Uh, before I start, uh, I would like to thank members of my cabinet that are here tonight that work uh, very, very tirelessly in supporting this budget. I'd also like to thank Mr. Chris Johnson that worked many days and many hours in, in, in getting this done. And all the principals that are not here today but also participating in getting this budget done tonight. Um, before we go over the budget, just to give you an idea of what we'll be covering tonight, the first uh, budget overview, and definitely talk about our budget priorities. It is important not only to speak about, not only to talk about uh, what the numbers look like, but what will these numbers support. <coughs> Changes for the 2018 and 19 fiscal impact, and then we'll have the opportunity to ask questions. You know, there are four major factors that we take into consideration anytime we make a decision that impacts students in our district. There are four major factors that we take into consideration when we look at allocation of resources. And those are mission, vision, theory of action, and our goals. We cannot develop a budget without looking at our purpose. And our purpose clearly said that we have to provide, we would like to provide equitable access to a high quality education to all students and to prepare them to become members of society. And as we design our budget, we look at how our budget is aligned with our purpose. Another factor that in, impacts the decision that we make on a daily basis regarding in the school district is our vision. What do we want to become in the future? And as we look at our vision, it said that our student will graduate with a competency. So we make sure that our resources are aligned to what we want to become in the future. Our theory of action, our theory of action, our strategies, how we will get there. And this is also important because our allocation of resources are based on the strategies that we're going to use. For example, there's a strategy that said that we will provide strong hiring practices that will be um, using high-level support for teachers. And that means 
professional development for teachers, the coaching for teachers, and all this is impacted in the budget. And then we have our district goals, our strategic goals. And we have five goals for strategic plan, and our resources are allocated based on our goal. As you can see, number one is students, prepare students for the 21st century. So as we look at technology, as we look at new reading programs, as we look at new math programs, how are they aligned to the 21st century? Staff, build the capacity of our staff. As we look at new resources, what do we do to build the capacity of our staff to teach for the 21st century? Family and community engagement, we cannot do this job without the partnership of our parents and how do we reach every parent in our school district. Operation, we continue to strive to be more efficient at what we do on a daily basis. And climate and, <coughs> and culture. Definitely we want to make sure that every teacher and every student is in a safe environment in our school district, an environment conducive to learning. So I want to share this with you <coughs> because these are the pillars of our decision as we go ahead and develop in our budget and look at the allocation of resources. So, why the Wyndham Public School budget? Why the Wyndham Public School budget? And why we would like you to support this budget? Is because this is the tool that we will use to achieve our mission, vision, theory of action, and our goals. This is the tool that we will use to enhance teaching and learning in our school. And this is the tool that we will use to build the capacity of our teachers. This is the tool that we are using, that are very inclusive tool, that, that is the reflection of the request of department heads and also principals of the buildings. Just let me share with you the planning process. I think this is very important for you to understand who has been involved in this planning process and in what way they have been involved. We started by reviewing our mission, vision, theory of action, and strategic plan with department heads and with the principal. Where do we want to go? We started with the end in mind. These are the things that we want to see to happen next year. Then each department and each school submitting a proposed budget to the superintendent. Once that budget was submitted to the superintendent, we met with the principals, the department head, uh, the director of finance, and we reviewed those budgets. Well, what I mean by a review, they present an <coughs> argument of why they needed the resources that they are requesting. Someone was planning to have another elementary, a kindergarten class, another school was planning to have another music classroom, so they present their argument of why they needed the resources that they are requesting. And I do want to say that each of the budget proposals uh, that stood that the principal or the department had presented had to be aligned to the vision or mission of the school district. So as we look at initiative in the district or initiative in a particular school, they had to be aligned to the mission, vision, and the goals of the district. <coughs> so our journey. Enrollment, I think it's important for us to take a look at enrollment. Our enrollment is increasing, but as our enrollment increases, also the needs of our students increase. As you can take a look, enrollment has increased, but so is the need for special education services, and so is the need for English as a second language mm -hmm. services. And those come with a cost to the district. In order to provide the services that they need, in order to support their teaching and learning, it is imperative for us to be able to have a budget that supports those people. So I think we are very proud to say Wyndham Public School enrollment is increasing. As we know that many school districts that surround our area, the enrollment is decreasing. <coughs> budget increases or decreases in 2013. This has been a mixture and a range from 3.6 to 1.9 uh, 1 to 1.3. So we have uh, years that the budget has increased and years that we have not seen an increase as expected. <coughs> I think it's also important
to speak about our budget priorities. What will this budget support? As we have our mission, vision, and third action, we also look at the different initiatives that we will have in the district. One that we will continue to work on is in providing more opportunities of college courses at the high school. We know that the world of today, graduate from high school is just one step. We want students to be able to be college ready or career ready. And so as we said in our mission, college or career ready, we have to continue to expand those opportunities. We have uh, several programs at the high school that offer college courses, but we are continuing to explore and to have conversation with other community college of how to expand uh, that area. We have done, uh, I would say, a pretty good job with uh, math and, uh, and ELA curriculum maths and standards. The new science standards are coming to play, and that means that we'll have to implement the new science standards. Redesign of the district bilingual program. Four years ago when I came, we didn't have a bilingual program based on the needs of our students. We started uh, a bilingual program in kindergarten, then moved to first grade, then we moved to second grade. We will be moving to second grade. However, after three years, there's a need to redesign that program based on the number of students that are entering the program, based on location of the students, and also based on the need of the students. Music, instrumental music program, I think this is a program that is very dear to my heart. Uh, I think music is very important for students. Uh, we have very talented students. And we have a goal in mind. We want to see a high school band that is the best in the state of Connecticut, the best in the state of New England, in the region of New England. To do so, we have to start at the elementary level. We have to make sure that we have instrumental music at the elementary level. What takes place at the elementary level will impact the middle school and will impact the high school. I'm fortunate to say that we will be recipient of a grant, Save the Music Foundation, and the grant will be covering instrumental music, but we have to cover the staff uh, uh, for that program. Implement an alternative school. We started this year with a, uh, in January with the implementation of an alternative school. We have to continue. We believe that not all students can be successful in the traditional high school, and we need to make sure that we provide the opportunity to all students to be successful. So this is just providing another setting for students to be successful. Technology, I don't want to mention a lot about technology, lots of discussion about technology, but we cannot be in the 21st century if we do not improve in technology. <coughs> As we look at technology and we look at academics, we also look at the social and emotional needs of our students, an area that teachers are requesting more support and that we know that there is a great need. And so some schools are starting to restore their practice. We wanted to make sure district-wide we have that initiative. We want to enhance the multi-tier support and acceleration for students. We want to talk about intervention and acceleration, not only intervention. Students that are advanced need to be able to move. My approach, my philosophy is everyone should be moving. <coughs> if you're here, you move here. If you're here, you move here. But everyone should be moving, and so we want to make sure. And the ninth grade academy was started in the high school and is working very well. We want to make sure that it's successful. Areas that are challenging for us is the area of attendance and truancy. We have to invest in those areas. It impacts not only student learning, it impacts our accountability, it impacts student graduation. So we have to invest in attendance and truancy. And build teacher and administrator capacity. So these are investments that we will continue in the 218, 219. <laughs> This is just a mirror of the one we just spoke about. More courses at the high school college courses, a reading initiative that is already in place, a math initiative that is already, uh, that's already in place, or a writing initiative that already in place, or a technology initiative one to one is already in place. I, I, you know, I've been here for four years, and every year I see the future of Wendell Public School as a brighter future. And I, I don't know if I'm optimistic, but I see it to 18, 19, brighter than 17, 18. Every year I see it brighter. So I know that we'll have a bright future and that we'll be able to provide learning opportunities to our students. And the purpose of this budget is to support those learning opportunities. <coughs> A 
as we make those decisions, how do we arrive to those decisions based on our mission and vision? We arrive to those decisions because collectively, my cabinet, my team and I, we believe in providing equitable access to a rigorous instructional program to our students. And that's why you see we have initiative in math, we have initiative in reading, we have initiative at the college level. Because we believe in providing that equal access to high quality curriculum. We also believe in providing the resources to the school, to the teachers, to the principal, to achieve what we say we want to achieve. We cannot achieve what we want to achieve without the resources. We need to develop. We believe in staff growth and achievement. And we believe in the opportunity for parents to be engaged. Parents are our partners, and we cannot achieve this without our parents. And we also believe in a culture of performance and holding people accountable. Four years ago, exactly three years ago, our cabinet decided that we would focus on four things. Five things. Focus, direction, improvement, innovation, and sustainability. And Susan is smiling here, Mrs. Crow, because this was the conversation we had of how we'll continue to lead with focus, with direction, improvement, innovation, and sustainability. And I think we have not lost that direction. We continue to focus, we continue to look at innovation, we continue to, to, uh, be, to be sustainable. Now, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes, I think this is very important. I am not going to read all of this to you, but I think it's very important for you to see that our strategic plan is not lost in translation. That our strategic plan, the goals that we said we want to achieve, this budget, the budget that we had before, we are achieving those initiatives and those goals and those objectives. So goal number one that we have in our strategic plan is to provide equitable, rigorous access, rigorous access to a rigorous instructional program. And I'm not going to mention all of these, but again, here are the example of we having a new science curriculum. We have a math initiative. We have a close reading initiative. We expand college opportunity for students. We have a music program. We're redesigning the district bilingual program. We take every one of our strategic goals, every one, and we look at the strategies and we look at objectives that need to be achieved. And we look, does it fit? Does it fit? I can tell you my people, sometimes I'm tired of me when I go back and say, no, go back and look at this. But we look at what we're doing is aligned to what we say we want to do. It's aligned to the goals of the school district. And if it's not aligned, it's not part of it, then it doesn't fit. Goal two is to build staff capacity. In every school, we have coaching for the teachers. We have close, close reading training for all teachers, K through 12. We have data teams in every school. And we have focus staff development targeting in math and ELA. K through 12. Opportunity for parental engagement. This is one that we continue, continue to work on. Our community expo has increased. Our parent university is not only two times per year now, but we have monthly workshop in the community that has increased. Access to timely information. Our media uh, engagement has increased. Also with, with parents. And we have strengthened partnership. We have new partnership that I've never heard before, such as the Salvation Army. We have a partnership. Uh, we have one with um, Sir, Sir Optimist. Sir Optimist. And the new one that is coming on board is the one with the Rotary, Rotary Club. Culture efficiency. We understand that we're the business as student achievement. But we also in the business of being efficient on what we do. We are also in the business of being fiscal responsible. We are also in the business of performance and accountability. So as just an example of things that we are doing in that area, the human resources department continue to work very hard to recruit and to develop our teachers, knowing that it's very difficult in our school district to maintain. Across the country, I was hearing this morning that in the state of Arizona, 48% of teacher leaves after the third year in the state of Arizona. 48% of teacher leave or 42 after year three. Um, so we continue to work very hard on, on, on that. We continue to use data in the schools and in, in the central office to make good decisions. 
and we continue to make sure that we align people, we, we restructure the department, we look at school to align people in the right position in the right school to make sure that we're efficient. A new goal that those came along last year was the, the climate and culture goal. And this one deal uh, with culture diversity, culture training, we deal with attendance, we deal with also with discipline, and we have a great need in this, in this district to address trauma, to address uh, restorative practices, to address social and emotional development of students. And so this is one that is new to us since last year and one that requires our investment time, money, and people. So I give you this information before I talk about numbers for you to have an idea that the, the story behind the numbers, the numbers by themselves means absolutely nothing. There is a story behind the numbers and that what is important. The numbers need to support our story and I'm hoping that that's the picture I'm presenting to you tonight. So how the budget is funded, <clears throat> as you, you have that information, local, state, and federal. And as you can see there, state, uh, the Connecticut funding, the ECS, and state and federal grants. And the ECS funding has not changed. Last year was seven years, so this year will make it eight years. Dr. Sewell, am I correct? At least. At least eight I think years. it's nine, actually, because that... Well, let's, let's go in the middle, eight. Mrs. Lambert and I have been on the board for eight years, and it hasn't changed since the year before we were on the board. So I think this is the ninth year of the same rules. There was an attempt this year mm -hmm. to change it, yeah. an attempt this year uh, to change it, and um, but I did my research today before I came here to make sure the attempt has failed. There's no intention to go and revise it. And the issue is you have 168, 60 school districts in Connecticut. You only have 30 alliance district. And I don't see the other district saying, yeah, I changed the formula to help those alliance districts. So, um, that attempt has failed, so we don't know what's going to happen. But at the state level and at the federal level, funding is also decreasing. How the budget is spent. I'm going to say that I'm very proud to say our budget, 82%, 81.8, goes to schools. 82% of our budget goes to meet the needs of schools. Salaries, program, etc. Only 18.2 meet the need of central services, not central office, central services, meaning maintenance, etc. But 81, 82% go to school and to service schools. <coughs> Investment in our schools, I am not going to spend time, but you can see here how the money is allocated to our school. We have more elementary schools <coughs> and they receive the majority of our funds. Followed by high school and middle school, rightly so, because of the type of structure and scheduling and needs of high school. And you can see our tuition, special ed and regular tuition. This is tuition, a student that go to other schools, non-special ed, but other schools, such as other charter school or magnet schools. Then we have a breakdown of the budget by areas, elementary, middle, and high school. This is an example of how we, uh, the elementary funds are allocated. Again, instruction has the majority of the budget, and that means supporting the school with teachers, the salaries, et cetera. Then we have the middle school budget. Again, the highest percent going to instruction. Then we have the high school budget. We see the same pattern, the highest percent going to instruction. The high school has a little different, has now this co-curricular and athletic activities, so they have a little more expenses. And here are central services budget. That includes central office, but central services. A 
as every year the budget has cast fibers, things that we have no control over that impact the budget. These are things that are mandated based on uh, the needs of our society, and we have no control. One of them, the first one, is contractual obligations, staff salaries, and we don't have any control of those. We may have control as we negotiate the contract, but once they're in place, we have to follow those. Um, benefits, pension, retirement, medical, um, we have no control over those. I, this morning I was discussing some medical benefits. Uh, they set by, I guess, by uh, the market. What is it by? Anthem? By, well, <laughs> <laughs> the market. They, they market. suggest. By the market. <laughs> yeah. uh, they set by the market and they don't ask us for our feedback in setting those whatsoever. Okay. Um, then we have staffing requests. What the school believe they need to do their job and improve the achievement. Transportation is one to coming to light and I'm very happy <coughs> to see that finally we're tackling transportation. It has been uh, something that over years um, has been an area in the budget, but this budget tonight does increase transportation to the full amount that we, well, the we full amount that we still, we put full still a little short a little, of what, not that much. what the cost driver would yeah. implicate, yeah. but we tried to get to that. To that amount. Much Substantially the there right. versus prior yeah. years. It does include technology, and uh, technology is very costly. Is is difficult to say we're going to be in the 21st century and don't increase the use of technology. And then what you see there is the efficiencies, and those have to do with the changes that we made in operation or personnel in the district. And I think I have another chart mm -hmm. that will show those. So here are the staffing requests for the district, one elementary music teacher, three bilingual teacher, a special education teacher, an instructional part-time technology coach, and again, these all have to do with the initiative that we have in the district. Putting our money to align with the initiatives. And here are some of the efficiencies that we have. Personal changes that you both, you both saw, we'll see in page 33. Um, certified, following the request of the board, we decided to fund salaries at a 97. 97%. Uh, looking at past trend in the district for at least five years. Uh, benefits, we're able to take some money out of benefits following the suggestion of the board also. And other things that, other areas that we're able, minor areas, some in technology and some in other areas. So we have a saving there of 1,350,000. The here are some of the personal changes that will be eliminated. One director position at the central office. One coordinator position, again, central office. These are not school positions. Two former professionals. Realignment of an administrator position. That meaning uh, realigning it, giving it another job description, moving around, get some money. And a certified media specialist. Uh, uh, at this particular time, the library has a certified media specialist. Years ago, they didn't have that. One secretary at the Institute of Nutrition, uh, two ICO interventionists. We don't know exactly uh, what that will play out. The school would not lose the person. There will be that person in the school doing that function, but uh, there will be some combination there. So the function will still exist. We feel that district-wide at this particular time, uh, we can combine some other function in the schools. And here are some uh, operation changes that you can see some increases. Transportation again, that this year we tackled very hard. Tuition, and that includes special ed and non-special ed. Other personal services. So you can see some other increases that we're having. I, I think the biggest increases are transportation and the contractual and the contractual obligations. To, to technology. And the technology this year. Yeah, yeah. The technology. Technology, yeah. transportation, and the obligations. Is the technology under equipment there? Technology is equipment, right? That's what we discussed the other slide? night, yeah, right? Okay. Where right. we, we made saw. some changes. We kept some grades and right. let's took out some other right. grades and. We took out the some the yeah. server and the um, AV. We made a change there. Okay. Uh, Twenty five thousand, like we talked about the system. So this again is also a chart for you to see transportation being one of the biggest ones, and technology, and the staff salaries. 
and at your request, we divided that up, server versus the one-to-one. -one. We eliminated the, the chrome for foot graders and moved that to the servers. So so, gonna, are we going to put the fourth grade one in capital? Not this year. Not this year, okay. Not this year. You guys uh, did not support that request. Okay. I hope that we don't have any fourth grade parents. <laughs> we put it next year. We moved it up next year. So the request for the general fund is $49,400,043,364, and that, that's an increase at 3.63 from the 1718 budget. You know, just a little bit of why this budget, and you will see that this budget will allow us to continue the journey with the public school, to continue to improve, to continue the momentum in the to continue the pathway that we're ready on the pathway the trajectory of moving upward. Definitely something that we're very, very, very fond of is building the capacity for teachers and administrators. And definitely we believe that we balance the needs of the community and the schools. Those two reinforce one time again, one more time, that you will provide a rigorous curriculum to your students, academically an extracurricular activity, um, college opportunity, and a music program, bilingual education in elementary school, trained in technology that I think we cannot live without really moving in the area of technology. If we do not do that, our kids will not be able to perform in the real world and strengthen the capacity. As I said before, is a tool to achieve our mission. Vision, our third action, is our tool to achieve the goal of the school district, and is the tool to achieve the best education for our students. Thank you. So now I will take any questions. Oh. So I'll take any questions from the board. So we'll open it up uh, to questions from the board. and. Um, Will we also be able to entertain some questions from the from the public too? Um, but let's give the board first uh, dibs. Yeah. Uh, anybody on the board want to ask any questions about this proposal? Um, may I? Yes. Okay. Go right ahead, um, Tracy. Dr. Garcia, I know you had mentioned before about the interventionists, but looking at our um, report from the state, I can't. It just flew right off the top of my head. Where each of the schools are went up or down? The, the accountability. The accountability index. index. Thank you. I knew it began with an A, but it was escaping me. <coughs> um, where are we pulling the ICs from? And concerned with some of the schools didn't do as well as others, making sure that we're sure. continuing to support them. Because two or three years ago, it was a huge push to put ICs in all the buildings. And that's had varying degrees of success. And I want to make sure that we're that being, you know, dollar, dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Pennywise and pound wise. foolish. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, pound. Dr. Garcia, pound. you might want to use the mic. So, yeah. Totally agree. And so what I want to bring to your attention is um, that as we implement initiatives, like anything in life, um, there's a starting point, there's a middle and an ending point. And so when you start something, it requires lots of support, financial income. Once you start working, maybe that support decreases or the strategies change because they're already in place. We value the work of the ICs. We value the work of the interventionists. We value the work of the coaches. Actually, the coaches was my initiative to put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that it was very costly when I started is one of the most costly initiatives that we have. Um, fortunately for us, over the last three years or four years, it has been working. And so we want to continue working, but now we're in a position that looking at the needs of schools and looking at the enrollment in the schools, the ones that are working on that work, we're able to make some adjustment. We're able to make some adjustment. Every school in this district has, except for the high school, not because um, of money, but they don't can find a person, has a data coach, a math coach, and an IC. Right. A ELA, math, and IC. That's unheard of. You cannot find that even in the richest district in the United States. It's not going to happen. Okay. But we believe that there was a need for it in this district when we started. Mm -hmm. However, now, based on what we have, we're able to make some combination in the smaller schools that are performing very well. So, for example, we can have an ELA coach that also may could serve as an interventionist in the schools. 
because we find that school to be the point that that could happen. So we're not going to eliminate them whatsoever. We're looking only maybe two district wide. So, so elementaries might be sharing one or something. Maybe like two elementary share an IC. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we'll reassess next year and decide. Definitely. If mm -hmm. there's been a drop or if there's a significant yeah. need, then we'll add it back sure. in. Sure. And you know that's part of evaluation of a plan. Part of evaluating a plan is that you look at it on a yearly basis. So we have looked at this initiative and still it's working. And we feel that at this time we can make that adjustment. Next year we look at it again and say, did it work or did it work? Dr. Garcia, for the members of the public or in the audience who are listening, you might want to say what an IC is because we're using some lingo that people may not know what that means. This is an issue with educators. Right. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> a glossary. <laughs> a glossary. Not a glossary, not a rubric. A rubric, right? Not a cube. Okay. <laughs> so we, we use the term academic coach, and we have an ELA coach that is a coach that uh, provides coaching to teachers in the area of ELA, English Language Arts and Reading. A math coach does the same. And an IC is called, don't ask me why this name, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's called instructional consultant. And what they do are the data in the building. So every school has a coach that handle the data, the assessment, and provide this information to teachers and principal in order to use in the data meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, is there anybody else who on the board who has any questions? Murphy. <clears throat> so this presentation was totally about the general funds budget. Yes. And, and so I, I think it's important to note that uh, when you look at the total budget book that uh, was handed to us tonight that um, there's a reduction in state and federal grants of a total of $630,000, uh, which means that some of the increase that we're used getting here is really covering decreases that we had gotten, you know, mm -hmm. So in order to continue supporting our programs, whether when we get cuts in grants, we either have to pick that up in general fund budget or or retreat, I guess it would be the, uh, mm -hmm. the operative term. Uh, so our total, our proposed total budget increase is only 1.8%. Uh, right, but you're okay. covering the decreases. Which is $630,000 worth of, of uh, budget, in, or, decreases in grant support. So this is very interesting because as the grant decreases, the general fund will have to pick up those and then we get rid of them. Either that or we have to sacrifice something. Exactly. So and the grant continued to decrease at the federal level and at the state level. Okay, so one thing that I did notice though that I wonder about is in the last couple of years we've had an increase in special education of roughly three percent, uh, three percent aggregate, which is uh, actually about a thirty percent increase in the total number of, uh, you know, from, from where we were to where we are. Um, we have more students, so we have more special ed. But the percentage of students is in. So what's driving the increase in special ed? I mean, we're already one of the highest districts in the state, as I recall. So I'm going to start with that. I have Mr. Pavon, that is the director of special ed. I know he has. No, Miguel, why you don't start? Because I know you have the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> as, as we've talked about in the past, um, the drivers for special ed are, are hard to pinpoint, right? Because we get a lot of students. I believe last time I was at the, at the retreats, we talked about how we. Uh, uh, have received students in a district, the number of students that come from districts, not just from Puerto Rico, who come with IEPs. And so that is a big driver when children come into the district already with services. By law, we have to, we're mandated to follow whatever's on there. We can make adjustments, but the drivers are not necessarily, just because the students are increasing, yes, there's gonna be higher percentage of students also in special ed, but. As we know, uh, well, special ed is costly, transportation is costly, and when we get students who come in who already have services, those... Yeah, I understand that we have to cover the students who come in, with, but, but that's always been an issue in this mm -hmm. district. So mm -hmm. suddenly we've got a substantial increase even in that. So yes. that's what I'm wondering is why is this accelerating on us? 
Have, have we suddenly become a magnet for special education from for some reason? Well, I, I think I, I mean I know we deliver the service, and and so it I think it, it makes it attractive for people who need the service to want to come to Wyndham. But I, what's I don't going think it has on? Has to do with the schools. I honestly think it has to do with the services provided in the community. I don't think because a lot of those students that we have in special ed, a lot of them that comes to us, so them are in place with us. So I think you have to do that we provide a lot of services mm -hmm. in our community. These are people that are moving it into our community with already with that with that IP. Yeah, I know, but I mean we've always had a high percentage uh, right. statewide compared to the rest of the state right. of, of students requiring special ed services. But suddenly we've gone from 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 fifteen and a half percent of our students yeah. to eighteen and a half percent of our students, and 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 that frankly is expensive. I, I, I may say to you, the students that are being identified are not students that are already here. Are the students that are coming in, coming in with an ID, okay. and that's a big difference. It's not with that we are identifying more students for special ed. Mm -hmm. It's the students that are coming in, are coming in with a special ed IP. If, if I can also add. Um, you want to get my microphone? The type of services and needs that we're seeing in our students now is very different than in the past. We're seeing students who have more trauma, more mental health needs, require placements that have more services. And so with more services, it's more costly. That's another driver that is happening. And that is something that you are seeing across the state. The percentages are increasing across the state. I'm not sure 100% why there is an attraction in Wyndham, and I don't think it's that we are providing these services, more services here than anywhere else. I don't think that's the case because if the child needs it, we have to provide it. And mm -hmm. so that is that is another driver that I wanted I wanted to mention is uh, the what we're seeing in terms of the the type of need that we're seeing with kids and what that requires is costing a lot of money. And if you read the literature on the this topic, it is a trend yes. throughout. Across um, the country. Too. Yes, across, across the country. The country. Yeah. And, and with our young people, yeah. with, with this young people with trauma. We have programs in house that we, that we are effectively managing. We have the High Roads program uh, mm -hmm. that we brought kids from out of the district, back in the district. Uh, we have a program at the middle school and high school. And mm -hmm. we also have a pathway program at NACHOG that has helped Autism. us to reduce exiting students or outside placement. And, and Mr. Bologna has done a pretty good job yeah. managing those programs. Well, I mean, there, there are two factors here. There's the, there's the percentage of students, which is what this number is. And then there's also the cost per, or the average yeah. cost per student. So you're saying the average cost per student is going up as well as the fraction of students Correct. going up. So mm -hmm. we're, we're basically getting hit from both Twice. directions. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You know, right. absolutely. Yeah. At, at some point in the near future, we want to bring that to the attention of our legislators to see if we can get some help from outside the district to help support this because it's kind of a problem in a poor community to 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 expect the local community to to just absorb this i mean i understand that the the, the law says if the student needs a service we will provide the service mm -hmm. and i don't re i don't regret providing the service to the students who need it but it makes it difficult to also provide adequate educational services to the students who are not classified as special ed. Would decrease resources. So the, yeah, the resources have to go some, from somewhere. I, I think, think Dr. Sewell, we did see the governor recognize that in his initial proposals last year. He did yes. want to mm -hmm. give various communities but, large but, grants but, to address special ed, but, but that never yeah, played itself well, out. Well, unfortunately, the, the communities that are most in need ha don't have as many legislators in them as yeah. Uh, as somebody who's a registered lobbyist, I will tell you that, you know, they're greatly outnumbered. So, you know, we have 181 legislators, and most of them do not come from those districts that are high need. Well, if you look at most of the DERG I, which is mm -hmm. what we're compared with economically and stuff like that, they have hospitals, they have mental health facilities, they have other physical right. and mental and socioeconomic mm -hmm. issues that they deal with in those large centers and that draws the kind of community that needs those services. services. Therefore we have, that. that's why we have a higher number. It's not we're doing anything, we're providing the same services every other district mm -hmm. does, but we have these people coming here because there's public transportation, there's all the things they need to get around and to survive and to, to get right. better, which is the ultimate goal, but the onerous Cost. monetary right. burden falls on these poor 
large communities that are trying to handle all different kinds of right. mental, physical, and other it is services. Right. So and it that's is the reason that the number goes up in these in these areas. It is certainly something that we can bring up uh, when we meet with our legislators again. Um, but I think uh, so. Is there another point that somebody would like to make at this point in time? On the board or one question? More question. Uh, go right ahead. I want to make sure nobody. Yeah, else. I don't want to monopolize. I just right, have well, one more question. Okay, yeah, go right I ahead. I haven't looked at tonight's budget book because I wanted to to listen to what you were saying. But here you have the 256 for three bilingual teachers, and in the first budget book it was a decrease of twenty thousand dollars. Did we reconcile where that came from? Are these three new positions or are these three replacement positions? I want to be clear on that when I'm talking to the public. I think you went back and looked at those for 26,000. I think you had mentioned that they were replacement positions because we actually saw that the costs were level and that has not changed in the book. In so other the, words, the number when, when for the bilingual stayed? It, it stayed. So she um, explained at the last meeting that these were replacements for people. So these aren't three new positions. These are three replacement one, one positions. One of them is a new position, Chris. Okay. One Maybe of one of them is. Okay. So school staffing request, only one of these three bilingual teachers is a new position. The other two are replacements. So they're not, only one should be a, a staffing request. That Increase. sounds correct to me. Increase. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Garcia? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good catch. Anything else uh, from the board before we open it up to... Okay, uh, so I'd like to offer, um, we now have three Board of Finance members here. Paula's joined us. And um, uh, we also have other members of the public and leaders in the community. Is there anything that any of you would like to ask? And if you are going to ask, I'd ask you to come up to a microphone so the public can hear you. And we have parents, Mr. Yeah. I, I, we, I consider him a leader in the community too. It's an accolade. Yes. Yeah. It's not my own house. <laughs> <laughs> you be different. It's yeah. an any any questions? Um, come on up, Paula. You can choose any one of these, Mike. This one's fine. Do you want me to move my stuff? Or are you good on there? Okay. Sit here. I won't be long. No, stay as long as you like. We're happy to have you here. I apologize for being late. Could not get out of work tonight. Um, you mentioned alternate education program, and I'm sorry if you already explained that. No, no. Just curious about that yeah. and, and certainly costs so affiliated. So one of the things that the state mandated this year is that students that are suspended or expelled oh, that's be provided that with the services okay. at equal time and equal resources and attending school. Um, the traditional mo model of providing services to students that were suspended or expelled was homebound instruction, two hours per day. Mm -hmm. The state recognized that that's not appropriate mm -hmm. and so we come to another city uh, that we provide instruction to these students and they have to have the same amount of 900 hours of, of instruction. So off this is site. the first year that off this site. is going to be mm -hmm. instituted? Yeah. We, okay, started, so. we started something this Half January year. in partnership with the PATH Academy. So we do have a couple of students already in that program. But it's going to be fully uh, next year because we just started it half year this year. And the other question I have is the IT coaches. I, I don't know why. I thought there were already IT coaches in each of the buildings. I see. IC. No, I'm talking about the IT. IT Isn't there a? Oh, no. 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 The, 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 IT. Difference, the IT coaches are IT techs. Right. So they handle the computers, et cetera. Right. The, uh, the instructional coach. Oh, no, I know the difference. The I, IT the so instructional coach that we put there half time, part time, uh -huh. is to work with the teachers and implement the instructional technology in the classroom. Okay, so that did not exist that prior exist. to. No. Okay. The people that we have know how to fix the computer when they turn off, etc. Well, what we want is to work with teacher about how they can use technology, how they can use Google Classroom, how they can use those tools to to make instruction more engaging for students, and that's a whole different arena. Right. And then I guess the only other comment I would make is if there are expenses that in the past, as we've been able to group some equipment expenses or other things that we're able to fund in a different way that might lower the percentage of the of the budget that might be helpful too thank you thank you well, well we, we we actually did have yeah we would like to explore those options but we also did have pretty extensive conversations just so the board of finance understands and the public understands about 
the use of technology in the classroom is much more robust and central than it had been before. So these aren't really one time, I mean, having to spend money on this is not really a one time expenditure because you're constantly having to invest in that in the classrooms. And so it's a little bit different than um, buying a book that we can use for a number of years and then not have to come back and buy that, that well, kind of book. It is sort of like a book. It is sort of like a book, but, but, what happens but is we're trying to phase things in too yeah. and not do everything all at once. Yeah. So it seems every year we're gonna have technology expenditures that are part and parcel of the operating of the school system. Well, if you look at what happens, you, you put uh, a Chromebook in students' hands in the fourth or fifth grade. Um, they're going to be with us from the fourth grade to the twelfth grade. That Chromebook is not going to be probably the educational tool that they'll need eight years later. So somewhere along the line, you're going to have to have a repurchase of those books. And every year you get a new set of fourth graders. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, right now we're doing a rollout. We're buying but we're not going to use. We're not going to deal with the fourth graders, just to be clear. Well, right. this year, fourth, but even if it's the fifth graders and the ninth graders or the fifth graders, and the th we're 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 in the process of rolling out two grades at a time, and when we finish that and everybody has one, you're going to be now you're going to be replacing the oldest ones with mm -hmm. new ones. So it's going to be a, it's going to be pretty much a constant annual expense. The the way it will become helpful is more and more educational material will end up digital and we'll end up buying fewer of those textbooks down mm -hmm. the road. But we have to pay for the content, right? The textbook publishers are still gonna charge us for the content. They may not charge as much as a textbook because they don't have to physically print textbooks. So we'll save something there, but this is really gonna be, a, this is really an operating expense, right? There are a couple of components that we've talked about, like the laptops for the teachers that we don't buy every year, and, and, and a server that we don't buy every year that we can put in a capital budget. Right. So we have- We, we, we do we, have some ideas. We have a couple message. of things that we will be coming to you with that we're gonna say, look, this is capital, we need the money for this, but we don't need it every year. Any other questions? There was extensive discussion yeah. on whether to put the Chromebooks in or take them out, and since it's an initiative, some of us felt like it was important to be able to use it every year, so put it in as an operating expense instead of a capital. It is an operating expense. Mm -hmm. yeah. She said that. Yeah, she yeah. just said that. She did say that. <laughs> okay. Oh, we both did. Okay. <laughs> the members, are the members the anybody <coughs> else have any questions? Anybody in the public? Come on, Al. You got Al, do question. you have something you want to say? No, I mean, I, I, mean, I have some things like, in my head, but you know, not, I don't think like, um, no? Nothing I, tonight? I passed today. I think uh, you guys are voting on some things, or maybe voting next, next Wednesday. Next, next, next week. Wednesday, the, next, um, the next meeting. Um, so I, I think it was really important that Murphy clarify, you know, the 3.6 and the amount that we're trying to cover. because we You might want to come up to the mic if you're yes. saying that, because people Hot, can't hear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, no, I, I think it was really important that uh, Dr. Sewell mentioned you know, that increase of 3.63, because I heard a gasp when that number was put on the display from our Board of Finance member to my, to my right, which probably is, and I know what it was like a few years ago when that was what was passed at 3.6%. So at the end of the day, we know um, what happens with Dr. Garcia presents is the first step, and the Board of Ed, you're going to have to approve it, and then the Board of Finance gets it, and then, of course, we need folks to get out there and, and, and um, and vote to pass it. I, of course, want to be, be behind a budget. I love a lot of the things that I, I read in here in terms of the initiatives, and um, I, and I, I think it, it sounds to me like it, it, there's somewhat of a holistic, there's a, there's a, a bit of a whole, quite a holistic approach to our, our students here. I think if there's ever a time in uh, a school district that we have to think about beyond, a little bit beyond our books, um, and our pencils and papers and, and the whole being of our students, it is right now. We just saw what tragedy went down. Um, geez, that's actually making me a little sad there. You know, a couple weeks ago, and I think about, I am around kids, a, a lot of the kids in our district, 
a lot, you know, from, from sporting events and things like that. And I see the, the need that is beyond the, the, the need that, the need, there, there's, there's our social and emotional need that impacts academics is there. And, um, you know, as we present this, as the budgets are presented to the public, to, bo the, to the numbers guys at the Board of Finance, you know, I hope that's, that uh, translates. Um, because if our if a lot of these these needs whether it be for our you know, whether it be for special ed students or if it's it's for our um, for the folks who are not, um, we have to think about our entire student body and, and all the ways that make us as, as as human beings. How we talk about success and you know, I don't believe that success for our student body is just that I I got a 4.0 in my grade. It is you know. Um, do, are we are we producing some some kind thoughtful um, thoughtful students as, as as well who are going to look to achieve in the future? And I think when I look through some of these initiatives in here, and I, I'm very excited about your the music part, and I'm excited about the, the 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 language and the instructional coaches. I think you are we are addressing some of that. I'm sure folks are going to wrangle over all these numbers, but at the end of the day, it sounds like we're moving in the right direction. And I, as a parent just want to get behind the budget that I feel is going to address all the needs of all our students in our, our community. And that's really it for me, and now I'm going to leave. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to say anything? Okay, so to be clear, um, so what we'll be doing is we'll have our regular uh, first Board of Ed meeting of the month next Wednesday evening, the 7th. And uh, at that meeting, we will be voting on the budget. And um, after that, for the folks who are watching, it um, has to move forward to the Board of Finance and will be um, discussed and addressed there at the Board of Finance. On the 14th. On the 14th. Yeah. And, that of, and then, what happens is um, we'll have to go through some public process before we get to the point where we um, land on uh, what we're going to be finally um, presenting to the voters. And there will be a town meeting and a referendum, a budget referendum, the In May. second Tuesday of May, I believe. Um, that's up to the board That's of finance. Up, but now, the so. board of finance will, has the latitude under our town charter to change the date of that if they so desire um, based on what's going on at the state level with the state budget. Although the state legislature ends on May 9th of this year. So um, uh, things supposedly should be wrapped up by then. <laughs> we shall see. Um, so that's where we are, and if there's nothing else, I uh, will adjourn. Yes, Murphy? Just, uh, so is the uh, proposed budget going to be on the website? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. We didn't want to put it today. We wanted to present it to you first. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I would urge members of the public who may see this on television to, to take a look at it on the website. Uh, if there are any questions or concerns, There'll be an opportunity for public comment before the, uh, you know, as a regular before part of our meeting next Wednesday, which would be an opportunity to raise any questions or issues that people discover. Because once we've voted on this and sent it to the Board of Finance, it's then it's then in the hands of the Board of Finance, uh, and and it's going to be what we want. But if you want to, if you want to say something about it before we actually vote on it next Wednesday's the pretty much the final opportunity from the Board of Education's point of view. Then the Board of Finance takes it. Uh, I would hope we can encourage the Board of Finance to send it to the voters as we send it to the Board of Finance. Uh, I think we've worked really hard this year to provide the Board of Finance with a budget that's for real and, and, and doesn't have anything that can be reduced without causing some pain somewhere. Anything else? Well, thank you. Uh, with that, um, we'll adjourn at 8.05. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.